ever feel like your PC or, you know, your PS5 is just taking its sweet time, mm -hmm. staring at that loading screen. Mm -hmm. Waiting. Yeah, exactly. Well, today we're digging into something that might help. The Acer Predator GM7 2TB SSD. Right. We've spent some serious time with this drive, really putting it through its paces. Mm -hmm. And our mission here is simple. Give you the crucial insights, the stuff that really matters. Whether you're thinking about upgrading your PC, need more space in your PS5, or you're just uh, curious about storage tech. And the first impression, honestly, yeah. it's the design. It's, it's not flashy. No RGB overload here. Not at all. It's sleek, quite understated, actually, just that Predator emblem. It feels like the focus is purely on performance. Which is what you want, right? For a clean build, especially. Exactly. Keeps things tidy. And getting it installed. We found it surprisingly easy, which is always a plus. Oh, definitely. Doesn't really matter if it's a laptop, a desktop, or uh, cracking open that PS5. Slotting it into the M.2 port and securing it is pretty much the same deal. Yep, standard M.2 installation. It uses that PCIe Gen 4x4 NVMe 2.0 interface. Mm -hmm. That's the key to the speeds we'll get into. The fast stuff. But interestingly, it also works with older PCIe Gen 3 systems. Yeah. You won't get the absolute max speed, obviously, but it is compatible. Which is smart. That backward compatibility broadens its appeal quite a bit. Right. So even if your motherboard is Gen 3, you can still get a noticeable speed boost compared to, say, a SATA SSD or even an older NVMe drive. But you really need that Gen 4 slot to let it fly. Oh, yeah. To really unlock that potential, you need the Gen 4 interface. In a Gen 3 slot, you're probably looking at speeds uh, maybe around the 3500 millibeads mark for reads. Still fast, much faster than SATA, but not the full 7000 plus it's capable of. Okay, makes sense. So let's talk numbers then, the ones that catch the eye. Speed and performance. Let's do. We're seeing headline figures of up 7400 millibeads for sequential reads. And rates around, what, 6,800 millibeads? Yeah, around there. Those are really strong numbers, even compared to other Gen 4 drives out there. Very competitive. Seriously impressive. But peak speeds are one thing. How does it hold up in, like, normal use? Right. That's the key question. And this drive uses a combination of HMB, that's host memory buffer, and SLC caching. Okay. Break that down a bit. So, uh, basically, HMB lets the drive use a little bit of your system's RAM as a super fast cache. And SLC caching uses a portion of the SSD's own storage to act like faster single-level cell memory for incoming data. Ah, like a little buffer zone. Exactly. It helps absorb those bursts of activity, like when you're multitasking or transferring large files. So the drive doesn't slow down as much. It keeps things feeling, you know, snappy. Okay, so what does that actually feel like when you're using it? Any real-world examples? Well, yeah. Our testing showed some pretty noticeable improvements. Windows 11 boot times, for instance, were consistently around the 8-second mark. Wow, okay. Compared to a standard SAT SSD, that's, yeah. a, that's a big difference. Oh, huge. Easily shaves off several seconds, maybe more, depending on the old drive. And launching big applications, things like Adobe Photoshop or Premiere Pro, almost instant. Even office apps just pop right open. Nice. No more coffee breaks while Photoshop loads. Ah, uh, maybe shorter ones. And multitasking feels much smoother, too. You yeah. know, having tons of Chrome tabs open, working with big spreadsheets, maybe running a virtual machine. This kind of drive just powers through it without those annoying little pauses. Yeah, those little hesitations that just kill your flow. Exactly. It removes that friction. Okay, now. Gaming. This has got to be a big deal for gamers, right? Absolutely massive. The impact on loading times in modern games is, well, it's significant. Which games did you see the biggest difference in? Titles like um, Cyberpunk 2077, Horizon Zero Dawn, Forza Horizon 5. Games known for having pretty hefty load times. Yeah, those can take a while. This drive cuts those waiting periods down quite a bit. Honestly, if you spend a lot of time gaming, moving from an older drive to something like this feels genuinely transformative. Less waiting, more playing. And it's not just PC folks, right? PS5 owners are always looking for more storage. Definitely. If you're constantly juggling games on your PS5 because you've run out of space, this is a really solid upgrade option. Faster installs too, I bet. Oh yeah. Installing massive games like the latest Call of Duty or Elden Ring is noticeably quicker. And during gameplay. That's maybe even more important. You get smoother texture streaming, so less of that distracting pop-in you sometimes see when things get really hectic on screen. It helps keep you immersed. Right, okay. So fast speeds, great for gaming. But what about heat? Gen 4 drives can get pretty toasty. That's always the concern, yeah. All that speed generates heat, and if it's not managed well, the drive can throttle, meaning it slows down to protect itself. 
So what's Acer's approach here? Does it have a big heat sink? No, actually. It uses a nickel-coated controller chip and then this uh, thin graphene heat spreader sticker on top. A sticker. Does it actually work? Surprisingly well, it seems. It's a simpler approach than a bulky metal heat sink, but our testing showed it managed heat quite effectively. What kind of temperatures did you see? Under really heavy sustained writes, like transferring a 100 Gitobi file continuously in a PC case with decent airflow, temperatures tended to stabilize in the mid-60s Celsius. Mid-60s? That's not bad at all for a heavy load. No, it's pretty respectable. And in the PS5, during long gaming sessions, it stayed under 70 degrees C. The PS5's own cooling design probably helps there too. So the takeaway is that it handles heat reasonably well, but good case airflow is important, especially in a PC. Absolutely crucial for a PC build. Uh -huh. Since it relies on that graphene sticker and doesn't have its own big heat sink, you really need air moving over it in your case to keep it performing optimally long term. Good tip for PC builders. Don't skimp on case fans. Never a bad idea, especially with high performance components. Okay, moving beyond the hardware itself, does it come with any software, like for monitoring or updates? It does, yeah. Acer provides a utility called the Predator SSD Toolbox. And what does that let you do? Is it useful? It's actually quite handy. It gives you a clear dashboard showing the drive's health status, lets you check the smart attributes. Smart. What's that again? Uh, Self-monitoring, analysis, and reporting technology. It's basically the drive keeping track of its own health. Things like temperature, power on hours, data written to help predict potential failures. Ah, uh, okay. Like a check engine light for your SSD? Sort of, yeah. The toolbox lets you see that data. You can also use it to update the drive's firmware, which can sometimes bring performance improvements or bug fixes, and run diagnostic scans if you think something might be wrong. Sounds pretty comprehensive. Is it complicated to use? Not at all. It seems pretty straightforward. Lightweight, too, so it doesn't eat up system resources. The right. interface is clean, easy to understand whether you're a tech expert or just want to check if things are okay. Can you tweak settings with it? Like performance modes? There is an option for that, yeah. But honestly, the default settings seem really well optimized out of the box. Most users probably won't need to touch those advanced settings. Good to know. Keep it simple. Right. It just works well as is. Okay, let's shift to maybe the most important question for a lot of people. Price and value. Where does this Predator GM7 sit in the market? Is it expensive? Budget. It seems to land right in that sort of mid-range sweet spot for Gen 4 drives. So not the cheapest, but not the absolute most expensive either. Exactly. You can definitely find cheaper 2TB SSDs, especially if you look at older Gen 3 drives or even some basic entry-level Gen 4 models. But with those, you're usually giving up quite a bit of speed. Right. You trade performance for price. And maybe some features or endurance. Then on the other side, you've got the really high-end flagship Gen 4 SSDs. The ones with massive heat sinks and maybe slight higher pick numbers. Yeah, those ones. They might edge out the GM7 slightly in benchmarks, but they often come with a significantly higher price tag. So the GM7 is aiming for that balance point. It really seems to be. It offers, you know, the vast majority of the performance you get from the top tier drives, but at a more accessible price point. It feels like a smart compromise for a lot of people. Okay, so if we were to quickly recap everything we've talked about, what are the main pros? All right, pros. Definitely the exceptional Gen 4 performance, those high read-write speeds, the generous 2 TB capacity is great. Uh, that sustained performance thanks to the HMB and SLC caching, the thermal solution, that graphene sticker seems effective, broad compatibility working in PCs and PS5s, and that user-friendly toolbox software is a nice bonus. Sounds pretty good. What about the cons? Any downsides to keep in mind? The main things are, um, first, it really does rely on having good case airflow in a PC. Second, related to that, there's no integrated heat sink included, so you need to account for cooling. And third, while it's good value, it is priced a little higher than the absolute cheapest entry-level Gen 4 drives you might find. Okay, makes sense. So putting it all together, who is this drive really for? Who should be seriously considering the Predator GM7? I'd say it's ideal for a few groups. First, PC enthusiasts building mid-range to uh, high-end systems who want those PCIe 4.0 speed benefits without paying the absolute top dollar for a flagship drive. Right, hitting that value sweet spot. Exactly. Second, PS5 gamers. 
Anyone needing more storage space for their console and wanting faster load times will find this very appealing. Big quality of life upgrade there. Totally. And third, content creators or professionals who work with large files, video editors, graphic designers, programmers compiling large projects, anyone who needs that snappy responsiveness when dealing with big data sets will see a real productivity improvement. Okay. But what if you're on a really tight budget? Or maybe you only need a small speed boost. Yeah, if budget is the absolute primary concern, or if your system only supports PCIe Gen 3 anyway, then a good Gen 3 SSD might still make sense. You'll save some money. But you're missing out on the top end speed and maybe some future proofing. Precisely. You have to weigh the cost savings against the very real performance difference and the fact that Gen 4 is becoming the standard for high performance. This GM7 gives you that Gen 4 speed now. So wrapping this all up then, the Acer Predator GM7 2TB SSD sounds like a really strong player in the high-performance storage market. I think so, yeah. It strikes a really solid balance between performance, the features it offers, reliability, and crucially, value. The ease of installation is a definite plus. Uh-huh. And the everyday responsiveness, uh -huh. loading apps, booting up, it just makes everything feel faster. Plus, the thermal management seems perfectly adequate for most situations, especially with decent airflow. It really checks a lot of boxes. It does. So, bottom line, if you need a significant storage upgrade, whether for gaming, creative work, or just making your powerful PC feel even faster, and you want that top-tier Gen 4 performance without the absolute premium price tag, mm -hmm. This Predator GM7 looks like a very worthwhile investment. Absolutely. And maybe a final thought to leave you with. Think about how storage needs are only going up. Games are getting huge. 4K video is common. Data sets are massive. Yeah, 2TB doesn't seem excessive anymore. Not at all. So upgrading to a fast, high-capacity drive like this isn't just about making things faster today. It's also kind of crucial for future-proofing your setup and just making your whole computing experience smoother down the road.